Uh, I want to thank, uh, uh, first of all, Francesca Nassina, who's been uh, putting this together uh, for Society of Publication Designers, as well as uh, Bob Newman, who's not here tonight, but I know is really excited about this, um, and uh, I am too. Uh, it's a great partnership and long overdue. Um, i just going to read a little thing. Um, I, I started thinking about this idea of the of you know the designer and illustrator and and I, I I always always think about taxonomy and maybe that's working at a science magazine uh, you know when when we start off as as creative people you know maybe as a kid you're you're an artist right you're just you just kind of have this this genus which is I'm an artist and then you go to school and you start to explore your species and you become a designer or an illustrator or a painter. And then uh, as you start to work and, and, and find your career, you, you start to get these subspecies. You're like, a, you know, you're a, a medical illustrator or you're a, or you're a web uh, app designer. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we're so used to all these categories that uh, it, it's nice when you find people who are uh, more uh, the platypus of, of the animal world. <laughs> and, and uh, you know... But, but what's wonderful about uh, you know this group of people, and and certainly not only these people, but but many people uh, in our in our field who are both designers and illustrators, is there is a rich history, and uh, and, and it's easy to think you know just you know off the top of my head, I, you know, you know Paul Rand, of course, is you know a beautiful example of someone who is a beautiful draftsman as well uh, as an illustrator. Uh, uh, Milton Glaser, of course, an inspiration for many people here on both sides of this. Uh, and uh, I was even thinking about Paula Scher, somebody recently who's really, you know, I think she started off as a as a designer and then and then kind of had this explosion of of painting and really, you know, this this uh, visual uh, uh, conversation that she was having with words that that felt uh, really uh, unique to her uh, and unique in itself. Um, so I'm really glad to have this panel here. I think we're just going to, I'm going to first start with the introductions, and we're going to look at some images. Uh, and I'm going to start on the end here. Uh, this is Deanna Donegan. Uh, she is the uh, art director at, uh, uh, is that at New Yorker, yeah. one of the art directors. Uh, and uh, she's also an illustrator and graphic designer. Um, and uh, I think that uh, is, I, I met Deanna uh, last year and uh, discovered her work. I, I think she's, uh, you know, she's kind of like a hidden gem here in this world, uh, you know, working in a lot of the front of book uh, pieces with The New Yorker. And, um, and I was really excited to talk to her because I think, you know, in terms of the group here, you know, she's, she's fairly... You know, she's a few years. Yeah, you know, she's into her career, but but I th I, th I still think you have a little perspective about what it's like to be a younger designer and coming into this world. I mean, for you, you know, when you were coming out of school, out of SVA, did you feel like, you know, what what did the what did the two paths between illustration and uh, and design seem to you as you were as you were looking uh, for for work and looking for a career? Um, you know, I it all happened pretty organically. I went to SVA for illustration um, and at SVA design and illustration really don't overlap much um, like they do at places like Pratt and things. So I didn't have, I had a, definitely an interest in design and you know did it more on my own but once I got out of school um, and I started at the New Yorker, design really became the thing that I was focusing on and it wasn't, um, it wasn't so much a choice. I kind of just migrated into it. Um, and the thing that I think is so great, you know, now and for students who are graduating uh, more recently is that you don't really have to choose. They, they really do go hand in hand. And um, so I haven't found that I've had to necessarily, uh, you know, choose one or the other too much. That's great. And, and so when, when you're working, I, I, I know you sometimes employ yourself uh, for, for work at the New Yorker. So how does that happen? How do you, how do you start? Uh, there's a number of ways. Um, if, for instance, no one else will work on it, <laughs> I will do it. 
uh, you know, if, if it's just a time crunch and, and, you know, you ask five people and nobody can really do the really tight turnaround, I'm like, well, I'm here and I know what to do for this assignment, so I'm going to. Um, and other instances are just, you know, something like this where I love Murakami and so I kind of stole that one, <laughs> asked if I could steal that one. You know, it's not just, I'm, I'm not just taking it all myself. Like, oh, I'm deaf, you know, it's, it's still a group thing. Um, I'm still talking with my creative director and I'm getting art directed by someone else. It's not a free-for-all, but... Um, there I'm are those, stuff. but I, <laughs> I sometimes get to do something like this that um, is is really exciting. I, I have a feeling that's true of many of the people up here. Uh, <laughs> that you know, it, the opportunity to cherry pick, uh, you know, or, or any, or it, you know, especially if it's personal to you and you you feel really connected with it, to have the opportunity is great. Yeah. Uh, so next is Stephen Doyle, um, who is the head of Doyle Partners. And also just a wonderful uh, mentor and teacher of mine from SVA. Uh, he, he's also, you know, he, he has a, is a long history in both, uh, you know, design and, and direction from, you know, starting uh, with Esquire and uh, Spy Magazine. I need to bring up the age thing. Uh, we wanted a range. We wanted a range. And uh, but what I what I love about what you've been doing, uh, in the, I, I feel like in the past decade, and you know, I was looking at your uh, your website, uh, and and I, I feel like even from like maybe even like seven or eight years ago, I I, I even see like a, a real sea change in terms of the work that I'm seeing there, and seeing so much more of this kind of this uh, illustration work that you're doing, this assemblage, and and I was I was thinking, and was going to ask you, I mean, there, there seems like to be a big uh, transition where where you know, when we think about graphic design, and it, it's it's kind of like you're in, you're in, you're at your desk, you're working out problems, but but the work you do for your illustration is very physical. It's it's, it's material. Um, there there's like an aspect to it that feels like I can see you like standing up and working. So what what is that process like? Do you have a do you have a, a change in in mood when you're doing that, or a change in work? I have a change in um, space actually. The the work. That I that you're seeing here is is done at home in my home studio, and it, it is very physical, and it's all for me about uh, telling stories in a tactile way and using common materials to try to uh, project messages. Um, it's it's so fun to get away from the keyboard. The work that we've been doing lately is less editorial than it used to be, and we're doing uh, projects that are very architectural, like architectural signage and and plazas and and things in public parks and stuff like that. And it takes just years to get these things accomplished. So to get to work on projects like this, I think of of the illustration jobs I get as kind of a pop quiz to see if I still have the stuff. Right. So it's it's thinking about what material, whether it's cardboard or plaster or wood or books or or matches. What what common materials can I transform to tell a story in a kind of a familiar way? So it's really fun to get away from that keyboard and make a complete and total mess all over the place. You know, plaster dust and and scraps of paper and burnt matches and stuff all over the place. It's 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 my little my little heaven. That's great. Do you employ the same people? I mean, do, does your team come with you to the illustration, or is that something you do more with your, your the, the illustration I do on, on my own. Um, occasionally, there's something that's really difficult that needs a lot of, um, I don't want to say the, the P word, but we do use Photoshop sometimes. Um, so sometimes, if there, if there needs to be assembly, uh, I, I work with the, the team at the office. But if, if there's carving to be done, I do that. And uh, then we take the pictures and, and pull it all together. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Matt Dorfman, who is the uh, art director at the New York Times Book Review, uh, and also a, uh, a formidable uh, illustrator. Of, and, and, you know, I, I, I would hate to describe you in one way as an illustrator, which is kind of fun. Um, and But I was thinking about what I get from all your work, which is like, I feel like you're a member of a 90s indie rock band. <laughs> like you were, you were, you know, you were, you know, you might have been, uh, we're not in the best way, you know, like, you know, you were, you were opening up for, for Fugazi and, and then you needed a flyer and, and then you 
you know, <laughs> and then he started on a, a career to design. Um, but it, but it has there, there's a certain aspect that feels uh, exciting and raw and clever um, to, to your illustration. I mean, how, how do you have like do you feel like there's any DIY aesthetic to your work? Sorry. Can everyone hear me? Okay, sweet. Uh, do I think there's a DIY aesthetic? Um, I mean, I am doing it all by myself. So, there's <laughs> <laughs> so in that regard, yes. Um, but uh, no, I mean, I guess it's I don't I don't I I have I've always really been in in deep admiration of people that can that have a broad range and they can do a lot of stuff. Um, so a lot of my process involves not necessarily thinking about what I'm capable of doing and thinking about what the most, what the most engaging comment to whatever it is I'm reading is about. So I, I try to, I don't, I don't think about whether I'm capable of actually pulling something off. Um, I just think about what it might be and hopefully more often than not, I can get there. Sometimes I can't, and it gets really disgusting and ugly. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's traditionally how I've gotten on. Um, I don't play any music. Uh, I can't sing. Do you want to start a band? Do I want to start right now, tonight? Yeah, yeah should we start a band? No. Okay. No. No, I don't. Do you, do you ever feel like when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're going deep into that piece, do you feel like the designer part of you trying to pull yourself out or is it or is it do you feel like the illustration hat is like a totally different thing uh not necessarily because i mean i i have a lot of my self-loathing is alive and well in a lot of this stuff that i do so i mean if i have an opportunity to minimize my own illustration or to, especially if i think that it's better dwarfed in in the context of whatever design is wrapping around it then i don't really have a problem with that um i guess i i i do i mean if it is a traditional illustration assignment where somebody, where an art director is asking me to do an illustration. I don't necessarily throw the idea of a typographic solution out the window, uh, but I do try to think of it as first and foremost as a singular thing that I have to solve with a with an image of some kind. Um, if I'm tasked with, I mean, this was also, something like this was actually a, a pretty naked brief. There, I mean, they told me, like, this is, we need you to attack this word somehow with a bunch of other words and go to town and you know translate that somehow in a way that will suggest the feeling of the word. Um, so this was, I mean, this was really one of those perfect assignments because I didn't have to beat myself up uh, night after night after night thinking about what the solution was. Um, I could just do it. Uh, most of the time, it's the exact opposite where I'll where I'm reading this impenetrable thing uh, and trying to figure out what it looks like. Well, that's that's a start. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, Martin. Hi. Oh, that's okay. Brought to you by Serial and... <laughs> <laughs> Mail Kim? <laughs> yeah. All right. That was a little geeky. Uh, Martin is the art director at Time Inc., Time Magazine. Uh, and uh, he is also a, you know, the, for, uh, the most uh, formidable expert on Legos and Star Wars. I, uh, we're just going straight into it. We're going straight into it. Well, I, bring it, bring it on. No, I, 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 I feel like the, to me this is this is the persona of, of Martin's work, both both uh, for for your design and your illustration. Is is there's a there's a kind of a like I love the the play. I love this the even even in a muted palette like this, like there's still like there's this, there's this very kind of uh, pop sensibility uh, and and almost uh, like the the best part of the consumer sensibility. Like you know how how we get to these great colors and and treatments. Um, so how you know you know the, I feel like you get in that world a lot. You know you're you're doing a lot with like uh, characters and and uh, costuming and so uh, when you're um, working on like a like a Star Wars piece, you know I, I feel like you can pull from your your vast knowledge of of Star Wars to yeah. <laughs> To bring, sorry, we're we're getting deep, uh, but I'm just I'm just uh, you know I would actually ask the same question I asked of Deanna, like so you, when you uh, often have opportunities to add some illustration to your to your design work, so when when does that come out? Oh, that comes out it's kind of when um, that book came out, and the author if you're really into this author, you go oh I want I'll take this assignment. So that kind of, that happens to me too, 
And it's kind of happened throughout my whole career when um, earlier, earlier I was at the San Jose Mercury News, and this was way back when Calvin Hobbes ended, and they were doing a story about it, and I just said, I told the designer who was doing the page that day, I'm taking this, because I want to, I'll do the tribute, I'll do the, I want to design that page. And just even a few, a few weeks ago, we had a, 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 a poll on what should we name this new planet that we discovered, and Han Solo was one of the answers, and I go, oh, I am drawing a Han Solo spot, hello. So it's kind of like giving yourself that, your own illustration, and then, um, then people start to people know you for what you like. So apparently, one of my coworkers said, "I'm giving you this page, so you could do all the Marvel DC characters." And I got that assignment from Len to do all the droids. So you kind of you present yourself as, as as a certain way, where people know you for what you do. But hopefully, hopefully, it's not just that one thing too. So uh, yeah, not at all. I mean, I. But but I think there's a certain kind of characterization about like I mean this this feels like one of those punch out you know toys mm -hmm. too which is which is great but it, it, it's uh, I think it's because I'm just so obsessed with toys and just kind of like the nostalgia of you know like the whole Lego thing because like one, my wife one t one time told me your illustration work is like the way you build your Lego you're building it piece by piece that's just kind of like the process of my vector art stuff so kind of. I would like this too. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Oh yeah. Oh, can I say something? Yeah, yeah. yeah I like this one. Even at work, people know I love Star Wars. I'm like the biggest nerd about it, and they go, "Oh, do you want to do this cover story?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like Marco Grob did this like really amazing portraits and photography, and this was fun, you know. Melinda Beck. Getting closer. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Finally on the side. Um, so Melinda is an illustrator and a fellow Icon board member. Uh, I've decided I, I took an informal straw poll that you're the person I'd most like to be with in a bar fight in Austin, Texas. <laughs> well, I see what I can do about that. Uh, I'm sorry. on my side. Uh, and and uh, when when I started to get to know Melinda, uh, I also discovered that she is a secret designer. And and and, I, and we we've talked about this a little bit. And uh, I, you know, first of all, Melinda's work, if you're not familiar with it, her illustration work, uh, you know, she, it, it's so lovely. And she has so she wears she she has so many styles that she actually has categorized them. Uh, you know, there, there's the uh, black and white style. There's the the it's drawing so style. Graphic, the yeah, yeah. yeah. Smart. Um, which, it, which is smart. Believe me, she knows. And, and I think that that's where where your you know where your designer sensibility kicks in. It's like, well, this is going to sell because the, the art directors are going to call me <laughs> and they're just going to ask for this thing. And and even even if that solution isn't, you know, the solutions oftentimes are out, you know, wonderful and outside of that category. But uh, but I think there's a there's a certain kind of egalitarian uh, attitude to making solutions that I think then carries to the fact that you're also a designer. So I'd like to talk to you, actually, uh, these guys are most more known for their design work, but I, I think uh, you're not as well known for your design work, and I'd like, I'd like to talk to you about that. Okay. So how, how did you fall into doing uh, I actually design? fell into illustration. I started off life as a graphic designer, um, corporate design, <laughs> and... Um, so I, and I went to school for graphic design. My father was a graphic designer. Like I really started out in graphic design, and um, and I felt like I was. And I did some magazine design. I was like, I, I'm like sitting here like making the type, like fixing the rag, and I get to give this like fun job to someone else. And I didn't want to give it to someone else. I was like, I want to do it. And I took one design, one illustration class at RISD with Chris Van Allsburg. Yeah. So I only <laughs> like had to use Scratchboard, and that's how I got started. Um, and then I just started doing illustration. Um, like for Bob Newman at the Village Voice at night. And on the, well, I first did little drawings for myself, put it in a portfolio, um, brought it around, and got illustration work. And I was like, oh, you know, I got to design during the day and then illustration at night. And then eventually it got kind of crazy, went out on my own. Um, and um, did both. And the design, you know, I had the design up on my website for a really long time because I was really doing both. And then for a while, and then like about five years ago, I was like, all right, I'm just an illustrator. And I took it off. But then people were like, 
I hear you do design. You do design? I need a logo. I need a website. And I'm like, yeah, I do design. So it's kind of funny because with illustration, it's anyone does illustration, it's a perpetual, you perpetually have to like send out promos, send out emailers, put it on, you know, like I feel like the, promo, the promotion end of illustration is just like, it's a lot of work. Whereas with design, I'm like, I do it on the down low and, I, and it, jobs just come to me and I'm like, the difference between the two fields that way is just so huge. Like, you get kind of spoiled as a designer. You have to do very little to get work, whereas in illustration, you have to perpetually be doing it. The grind of self-promotion is big. Yeah, because it, it, it is like, you know, it's a, it's a third-level tab on your website. <laughs> well, actually, I'm redoing my website as we speak, and it will now have its own tab because it's gotten, like, kind of ridiculous that I'm doing this design kind of secretly. Like, secretly, yeah, I do logos and websites and packaging and... But I don't feel like your design work is as straightforward from the way you you do your illustration either. I feel like there's a, the the sensibility is all there. Yeah, although sometimes I have to rein it in. Like that's the difference between illustration and designs. I feel like design is there's much more reining it in, whereas illustration is just like just go for it, you know. So that's the one thing I like more about illustration than design. Post-its, drawing on post-its. Yeah, exactly. I guess it's like. Yeah, well, the difference, I think the big difference between illustration and design is when you illustrate, you're working for a professional, you know, you're working for another, or an art director, you know, whereas when you're doing design, you're working for someone who's probably never worked with a designer before, so you have a lot more freedom in illustration, I think, because who the client is. Yeah. All right, to, to my, my man on the right, Carlos Zamora. Hello. Carlos. So Carlos, I was just—he was asking me uh, just before. He said, "He said, you know, why'd you bring me here?" And right. and it's like, <laughs> why am I here? here? I said, "Well, you know, I needed I needed a fellow flyover state member of the panel." <laughs> no, that's I, good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, awesome. I, well, we're, we're all, we have a we have a common you know city that we love, St. Louis. That's um, right. The Lou. And uh, the Lou. And, uh, but, but also, Carlos is a fantastic uh, graphic designer, poster designer, and, and illustrator. And uh, I think that what's interesting about your, your work is I, I really do feel a, a, a completely different sensibility and, you know, your, your origin coming from Cuba, like, I, I actually get a sense of that when I, when I look. There, there's something, and I, 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 I'm trying to put my finger on what it is, but, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a real consideration for the whole page. And and just a real uh, a depth that happens with everything, and I think that's where you, you know the idea of this you know, the combination of illustrator and uh, designer comes through. I mean, the, the <coughs> how, how do you find you start these posters? Are you starting with with thinking about the what would be the illustration part, or are you are you thinking about how? How you, you know, are you tight? Are you kind of putting together the, the composition? Well, it is very hard for me to distinguish one thing from the other. In the way, uh, I mean, I studied graphic design uh, in Cuba, in Havana. I graduated in 2000. And, uh, you know, Havana is a, Cuba is a socialist country, slash communist, Stalinistic, whatever. Uh, we don't know what we are right now, but the thing is that education there is pretty strict. So we were told that you are not an artist, you are a designer. And that thing has been a problem because I think we, you, know, you can switch hats. That's why when you reach out, I was like, oh my gosh, this has been the curse of my existence. <laughs> I don't know who I am. That's why I marry a shrink. But um, <laughs> my wife is a psychoanalyst. That's, that, that's the word <laughs> of the day. Oh right? <laughs> so, so for me, you know, the thing is, you know, in, in design school in Havana, I, we have the pleasure of, of, uh, of being mentored by the amazing minds of, you know, the poster designers who built the, the iconic uh, sense and sensibility uh, for the revolution. So my, my, my professors for cartel or poster, it's funny, the, the Cuban poster for, the Cuban word for poster is cartel. And it's, it, has a, it has a very, a lot of connotations in English, but for us it's like carteles, poster design, so we die for making posters. So I was told, if you want to be a good designer, you have to have a magazine and you have to design posters. And my professor, one of my mentors was uh, Alfredo Rosgar, which is, you know, his rose, um, well, he did a bunch of posters from the 60s. 
and he's a he's a member of you know he his work is in the permanent collection for you know Latin American art in MoMA, and and he always said the most important thing is the idea. It doesn't matter what you want to do. It doesn't matter. So you are a creature, you know, an artist or whatever who is in the service of something. So think about the revolution behind, right? So you are not allowed to have a style. You are not allowed to have a voice. You are who are you serving. And that is a very interesting concept, which actually is pretty humble. You know, at the very beginning, actually, these poster designers, they were like, they didn't even sign their work. Because the work was the idea. Idea belongs to no one. Ideas are in the air. Our ideas are part of social movements, are parts of things that needs to be visualized. And they did that. So they taught us that. That's why my, you know, you know I, and what I do right now, you know, I, I did a bunch of magazines at the very beginning when I graduated. So that's why I was like, you know, this is my people. Magazine design, I love it. Because editorial design teaches you systems. You need to understand systems. You need to understand balance, type, composition. You need to maneuver with editors. You need to maneuver with deadlines. You need to maneuver, you know, you need to negotiate a lot of things. And, and, and you, you learn that thing from editorial. But the illustration allows you to have a voice. It's a very subtle voice. I mean, subtle because it's not you as your expression. It's, but you are representing an idea that needs to be communicated. So, for example, these posters are, you know, this was a campaign, the one at the bottom, to, to communicate, you know, that jumping rope thing. You know, it's, it's the arch of St. Louis, if you, if you guys have been there. So that was a very important message in the, in the bus stops to say, hey, it is safe to come here and play because people don't come to St. Louis to the downtown because they feel that it's not safe for the kids. So the idea of portraying the arch like a picnic and a kid and uh, a rainbow, it, it makes you feel like I can come and play and be safe. So the idea is that you have purpose. It's art with purpose. That's what poster design is. So, you know, if I'm an artist or designer, you know, let whatever, let the client decide, you know. But, you know, I enjoy, you know, and there, there are some parts in other projects when I get, you know, for, for me, you know, I'm getting, I'm becoming more and more an artist. I, I'm thinking, I know that there's, there's different uh, mentalities that, a different hat that you switch there. And for me, when, you, when I do that thing for editorial, uh, project, it's more like a sort of freedom. You know, you have more in touch with your own voice. That's a, that's a really interesting thing. I, and, and I think maybe now we can open it up to everybody. Uh, you know, uh, the idea that, you know, I, I think illustration, uh, or sorry, design is the invisible hand, right? We, we think about our, when, when we're wearing our design hats, we are, we are kind of behind the scenes. We, we, don't, we don't sign our work where we're not, we're, we're supposed to be uh, understated and, and serving serving the content. Uh, illustration is the content. So so when part when yeah, part yeah. A part of it. But but certainly the it, it's like the lead singer, right? It's it's the it's the part you're you're you might be looking at first. Um, so so when are those two things in conflict between you know, in in your own work? Is there is there a time when you're like, oh you know, like I I wanna be this you know, I want this to be you know, I want to. I would love to sign this design, or, or you know, or you want your your illustration to fade back. Do you feel like there's a moment? Anyone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think often in um, when you are a designer, and and that's what I do every day mainly. Um, sometimes there's a conflict in that I would really love to do the illustration. I would love, but I I don't have the time. Um, there's not enough hours in the day to do both. And so, you know, entrusting to another illustrate to an illustrator, and just finding that, um, you know, that perfect match, being that matchmaker, and and finding a way to marry the two. Um, it's it's what I love so much about it, um, but is sometimes a conflict in in trying to find that that match when you know maybe maybe you could do it. <laughs> do you uh, you know when you're. Uh when you're assigning a project, how does it feel to uh, assign a project to an illustrator when you're when you're thinking about that? You know, when you could when you could kind of assume some of the illustration mind, but but you want to give it to someone. I'm liberated. <laughs> like I no, I feel free. Um, I uh, I love assigning stuff to other illustrators. Um, in the most 
probably in the most selfish way that uh, a person can, um, because I <laughs> I get to, I get a front row seat to see how uh, to see how other people who um, who I'm terminally jealous of and envious of think, um, and so that's I don't know, I find that a very freeing process. Uh, aside from it also having to be one less thing I have to really think about, I'm handing this problem off to somebody else. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, I guess if you think about it in terms of karma, it does come back because I'll end up on the other side of it eventually um, illustrating something else and I'll, I'll be reminded, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, this is really like a, this, this can be like a grueling, painful experience um, until it's over. But it's, I, I, yeah, I guess it's, it's, in that regard, it's difficult for me to think of the two in, as ever necessarily being in conflict because I guess I'd, if I'm thinking about it in the capacity of, of the book review, uh, I mean, I have, I have very long conversations with, uh, with my editors about whether something is appropriate, whether an illustration is appropriate for something or not. Um, so I don't really get too hung up about them being in conflict from, on a case by case basis. If it's, I mean, if, if an illustration is in, is in the best service of a particular feature or an idea, then it's great. Um, and then it's really my responsibility to make sure that I'm working with somebody who will be able to, who will really have, A, have fun with it, um, and also be able to reflect and, and talk back to, back to whatever the, uh, the words are saying. I think for me, like, as, I think as illustrators, we also want to know, we want to have the information to give to another illustrator that we're hiring. I mean, all the work on, the, on these walls, I wish I could hire every person because we're also big fans. And we just, to, to, to call someone that I'm, I truly admire, I go, okay, can you do this? But as a designer, you need to know how long the story is. You, you need to know what the story's about. And if that, when that window starts to close, they're not calling you back to say, well, we can't do it. So that's when we kind of have to jump in or find another solution. So I think that's kind of, that's, that's, I think my main conflict. What do you What do you find is the the hardest part about being an illustrator when you're wearing that hat? Oh, it's a, I, I don't know what size to give them. Sometimes you know, it's gonna be, I don't know how many words you want to have, and that's just kind of like some basic information, you know. So I think it's just kind of the nature of news, how things change and go. <laughs> I, I wanted to go back just a little bit. I, I was curious. I have an answer for that question. Oh, you do? Oh, well, <laughs> please, please. I have an issue. I have a, an ethical com conflict oh, okay. between design and illustration. I think illustrators are very, very underpaid compared to the budgets that designers deal with. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm also a creative director for another, that's another extra hat. And uh, for an industry that it's, you know, that's, it's, manage a lot of budget, you know, like big budgets. I do retail, I do, you know, I can manage things like our, you know, there's a lot of components, so I need to administrate that budget, right? And, and what goes to the illustrator, it's nothing compared to the impact that that piece is going to provide to the whole. So part of me going into illustration and going through the process of being an underpaid illustrator, it's like, I need to understand how how is this, how this work? Because, you know, that, that piece I did for the, the big rooster for the St. Louis Design Week, you know, it's like, once you get that, once you, once you give that to, to, to an agency, they run with it, and it's everywhere. And it's like, you're getting like thousands of dollars, and I'm getting nothing. So, you know, it's, it's not fair. So I have an ethical conflict uh, about, you know, something needs to be fixed there. I don't know. Well, that, that, that's, that's, can I elaborate yeah. a little yeah, more? Yeah, please. On that? Right. I think um, as a graphic designer, you're trained to be a business person. Like right. you write an estimate before a job. Like I, I would say to illustrators, you know, whenever I do an advertising or book cover, I say, okay, um, you know, how many sketches do you think you want? How many rounds do you want to do? This is going to impact the price. I write an estimate. I write things in the estimate like, do you do changes on final? That's going to cost you more. You don't use the final. You still pay 100. percent Illustrator is like, you do that. Right. And I'm like, I track my billable hours, you know, and as a graphic designer, that's all pretty much part for the graphic designer course. And I track my billable hours for illustration and it's like, I get a full page. You know, I want to go to town on that thing. And right. 
full pages still pay 1000 to 1500 which is what they pay when I started 25 years ago, and it's hard to, like... How do you make a living? It's hard to judge, but I, I get a full page. I'm like, I want to do something awesome. But he's like, if you look at the billable hours, for a thousand dollars, it's really hard to do. You know, whereas in graphic design, that what I got paid when I started is not what I get paid now. And when I ask for money in graphic design, I write a little estimate with a budget and itemize it. I don't have problems. It's so it's a there's a big difference between the two that way. Uh, the, yeah, there's a, there's a utility there that's there for both roles, but it but it it's somehow expressed differently in terms of the way. And I think that all of us, you know, or all all the people on this panel probably see both sides of this, right? I mean, you're both dealing with the accounting of of being a a, a designer, a director, oh, and an illustrator. It's interesting if you um, think about the economics of photography as opposed to illustration. And you think about what a photographer can make for like 125th of a second, you know, right. compared to what we do, which well, takes so much. No, I know that's not fair. But um, <laughs> plus all the years but, uh, to, to get that picture. Often a photographer can can pull off a job in a in a single day, and often illustration t takes much longer than that, much more dialogue. Um, often photography is set up by the people who are making the thing and propped and styled by somebody else and then the photographer kind of comes in at the last minute and has the same rights to the imagery or more rights to the imagery than to the assemblers which is also kind of dicey. Did you, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's really, uh, I, I find it the most interesting thing about being on both sides of this, you know, is, is having that perspective. So what, what, what would you say, I mean, it seems like, I mean, I, I, I think it's always a conversation that is happening in the illustration world. It's like, how do we get, you know, a fair wage for, for our work? But as, as designers and maybe art directors, how do you feel like you would you know, talk to the illustrator side of yourself for that? I mean, what, what, you know, what makes that work for you? Something that's funny about I illustration in the editorial design world is that it's never a conversation. It's always, uh, you know, this is what our rate is. And, and then it's a kind of a take it or leave it. And in uh, in the design world, as you say, it's it's much more of a negotiation about what something entails and is worth. I think one of the differences too is the fact that design. Well, for example, you know, you and I we have a background with AIGA. You know, AIGA as organizations are important. Like like this house. You know, this this is what this organization does you know, elevates the conversation, you know, allows illustrators to provide a voice. AIGA has done an amazing job. It has, it's a 100 years old organization, kind of like this house too. Um, but AIGA has been very, uh, you know, emphatic in, in, in business practices, in how you, how you make, you know, how you do it in order to make it. So I think, you know, I think that, that, Designers are more uh, open to dialogue and to talk about these things, and and illustrators on the other side, maybe it's our artistic side. It's more like in, in, introspect. They they kind of they talk to themselves. They don't open up. They don't relate. They don't learn from each other as designers maybe do. You know, I'm you know it's it's in, it's unfair the comparison, but the fact of the matter is, well, you know that designers make I think a little bit more than 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 what it's it's you know for the same time. You know, so I don't know what needs to be solved there, but it's not fair. I don't have an answer either, um, <laughs> but I would like to. I would like to talk about rates for a little bit. Um, I mean, I guess just being at the Times, uh, our rates. I wouldn't call our rates good. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't. They're they're there. When I when no, I when I updated the op-ed page, they were it's like three hundred dollars to go crazy for six hours. Um, in the hopes that whatever it is you make will not only appear on the page the following day, but will also um, retain a modest amount of your dignity. Um, and you know, for the book review, they're not that much better. And there's a there's a very you know there's there's a very ugly undercurrent in the industry that suggests, well, you know, it's like for the New York Times, so in a way you're being paid in exposure, which is not which on one hand is not wrong. Um, Insofar as, I mean, speaking for myself, the New York Times changed my life. Like, I was working at a job I despised, and I started doing op-ed illustrations just to do something different, and everything changed. Um, it was incredible. But at the same time, if you're not, 
I guess I've always thought about it in terms of if you're not going to to pay a fair amount of money, then I feel like I have an obligation as an art director to create a a safe environment for that illustration for that illustrator to have as much fun and as much freedom and as much flexibility as they as they can as he or she can within you know certain boundaries. If the piece is about Nuremberg, I I can't just run an image of a dragon. Um, or maybe I can, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't tried yet. Um, but I feel like it, I, I, I feel like when it comes down to that, to that question of money and, and you think about how many people and how many organizations are going to be required to get together in order to force an issue, like better rates to come to fruition with budgets all across the board with something like that. In lieu of that, I feel like I have a responsibility to create an open space and a place where somebody can have fun and not hate themselves when they're done working with me. Well, so here's a question. Oh, sorry. Uh, just to elaborate on that, um, I feel like one of my biggest things with, in terms of rates and, and working with people, I, with web illustrations, um, I feel like there's a big disparity between what you get for print and what you get for web. And there's this idea, this long-standing idea that not as many people will see it, <laughs> which I think is really incorrect. Um, and, but there is just this huge budget disparity. And so again, it's like you know, protecting that illustrator and allowing them to do, be as free as they can um, to sort of try to even the, even the field there. I think for me, I think as all of us, we're all illustrators. I think this is why I love my day job. You know, that, 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 that stability. Even in school, and I was a student in the 90s, I go, I, I don't think I could do this freelance because I don't have that hustle. I don't have that um, confidence to do this all, all the time. And as for the rates, I've, we have a little chart. We have a little, let's say, a quarter page, half page, full page. And I just go to the top and I call someone. I don't, like, don't want to lowball anybody. So I think we understand, and we're their advocate. So I think we'll try to get as much as we can for you. So. I mean, would it be crazy to imagine a world where, where we started shedding these titles? I mean, I, I was thinking about, I mean, this is a talk about two titles, right? We're talking about illustrator and designer. But what if, you know, what if there was a thing like a creative problem solver? And that was, that was a title that... <laughs> <laughs> any of us could take on. I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously there are certain skills to each to each of uh, these groups that, um, you know, that you have, you, you know, if you're, if you know how to deal with type and, and, and a grid versus knowing how, you know, what, you know, how to, you know, correctly show a shadow, a shadow on a, on a face, you know, that those are, those are skills, but, but is there a way to kind of equalize this or, or is that, or would that not work? I think I think if you're trying to find a word for the two, you know, one word for the two for the designers illustrators, I think we're engagers. You know, I, I like to think of myself as, you know, an individual who uses the arts of engagement and persuasion to communicate an idea and to make to create action. You know, so so people can act upon something. But actually, I don't think it's fair that. To, to leverage, because illustrators are very special. Um, I have a profound respect for virtuosism. Like, like you know, there's so many centuries of, um, there's so much, so much depth, and there's so much emphasis on technique, and, and they take so much pride, pride, you know, pride on that, that I don't think, and design is such a strong profession compared to the art of, illustration and, and, and painting as, a, as an activity. So, so in a way, I, sometimes I feel myself as, an, as a designer, I'm like, yeah, I'm just a, I'm just a trickster. You know, I'm just, I'm just cheating. I'm just like taking the shortcut, cutting corners, trying to get to the point. And it's fine because I'm, you know, in my background is political propaganda. So it's like, it's, you need a point, get it, put it out, that's fine. But illustrators, you know, you see this work, the work that is in this, you know, it takes time. You know, these guys should be paid more and, you know, and around the world, you know. But I, think, I think about, like, my favorite thing about illustration is when it comes to being creative and having your own voice, like, you're like, when you're an illustrator, you know, it's like, 
you're just like, yeah, that's the way it is, you know, whereas with the pay with illustration is the thing where you get walked all over. And then with design, when it comes to the pay, you're like, yeah, this is what it's going to be. This is the estimate. This is what I'm going to get paid. But then creatively, then the client will walk all over you. Like, I, think, right. I was like, sometimes I'm like, I wish there was a perfect world where it's like, well, you have clients that don't do that. But it's funny. I feel like graphic designers, like, they're like, okay, fifth round of changes, clients, child likes purple, I'll make it purple. Whereas, like, an illustration, that would never happen. And I think that's the two weak points of the two for me. Yeah, my, my friend used to call that the PNS charge, the pain and suffering charge yeah. that you, you, you would add. The but bottom. in illustration, you know, like, when I do editorial, like, it's like, do three sketches, one gets picked, I go get to do my thing. I mean, like, art director almost never asks me what color I'm going to do it. It's just like a surprise, and everything's great, and that's good. So, so maybe a little bit of freedom is, is part of is part of the course with illustration, but uh, you know, you kind of you work for your dollar, in a way, with your relationship with design. Yeah. So, yeah, the thing is, you know, we were talking about what the thing that if we need to find one common ground, it, it will have to erase the differences. I don't think so. I think designers are designers, and illustrators are illustrators, and designers maybe can illustrate and illustrators can design, but I think the professionals should be, you know, uh, you know, isol you know, they are who they are. I think, and actually, and just to a little note on the payment thing, I don't want to talk about money, because actually I don't, I don't believe in money that much. Um, so I, think, I, think what, I think what they don't get paid, they get it in transcendence. Like, this work will survive the time you know, thanks to this, this society, this work will survive the test of time. Maybe our comps and our posters and our, um, you know, layouts, maybe they won't, you know, it's because there's something special here. But, but no, never, never mind that they're eating cat food under a bridge somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I just want to be like them, but I'm trying. <laughs> I think one of the interesting things about design that, um, that Melinda, that you were saying, is that clients want to help. And clients never seem to want to help when you're doing illustration because it mystifies them. It's just kind of out of their range. So it's a special magic that we have to create images, but everybody knows how to design. Right. Uh, okay, I thought it was because as an illustrator, we work for professionals. Like... You work for another art director, you know, all my, you know, like, they're almost like your, they're your angels. They, like, editor said something stupid, they squash it for you, you never hear it. Whereas, like, most of the time. As design, <laughs> most of the time, yes, but with design, you're like, I, I mean, your clients are probably more high-end than mine. are like, I've never worked with a designer before. No, I always, I always like to help. They really want to get in the kitchen and cook with us. <laughs> because it's, it's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> or they have a friend, yeah. So, so what is the hardest part about being a, a designer? From that perspective, I mean, is, is that is that the hardest part? Being being kind of like the uh, you have to be the uh, the business manager, the PR, you know, every everything. Uh. I would say that the hardest thing about being a designer is getting the right clients, because you really don't want to work for those guys that have the people in marketing who say, "I really like this font, and I kind of like these colors." And and believe me, it happens still to me that people want to really, you know, tell me exactly what font, and I, I kind of like it centered, you know, and like the whole list, and that's, that, so, so having the right clients is, is not, maybe it's not the hardest, but it's the most important thing about being a successful designer, I think, is to find people with whom you can partner uh, and, and collaborate intellectually, but not on the computer. <laughs> And again, I'll have to say, I love my day job because Melinda reminded me of this client I had doing design work where I use a different type, I use the same typeface but a different weight. And they go, Why well, wasn't it the same size of this and this? And you'd like fight with them. And I had to go, Well, because I went to school, because I've done this for a long time, I know what I'm doing. And they go, Oh, yeah, that does look better. So it's kind of this you're pulling your hair out. But then, like, when you work with illustrators, I just, it's such a joy, as, a, as opposed to a, a client, you know? So, so what, what could, um, what could uh, an, a designer learn from an illustrator, like from your perspective? Is there something that a, um, a, a 
a designer could pick up, you know, by like, you know, having both of those roles as a designer, what do you, what do you wish that like a, when you're wearing your designer hat, what do you wish that illustrator knew? I think this is a tough question for me because I'm always going back and forth. If I'm designing a page and doing an illustration at the same time, I'm toggling back and forth with pro the programs. You know, so I think, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. I think the, what, I, what I have learned from illustration is, you know, and what I've continuously learned from artists, illustrators, friends, is that they have really mastered the art of shutting, shutting down all the voices. It seems like they have less voices in their heads. As a designer, I have, you know, either the creative director or the project manager and the CMO, and I have all an or orchestra of voices that are pulling me apart. And I, I also have a, an orchestra of elements that I need to organize in the page. And, the, you know, I need to, including, you know, it's a whole system that I need to listen to. I think illustrators, they listen to the art director, they listen to themselves, and they execute. So I want to master that. I want to be able to listen to a brief, listen to my client, and say, you know what, this is the alignment that you need, and I'm going to give it to you because I can illustrate and I can design. I think one of the coolest things for me about being an illustrator is that I get to read stuff that I ordinarily wouldn't have read otherwise. And as you're talking about, you know, clearing out the voices, it's kind of like as an illustrator, you get a you get a manuscript and and you read it and you basically dive into the water and it's just you and the words and you've got to figure out a way to somehow visualize a story that somebody else is telling and that is really a lovely piece of magic when that happens. Actually, I have a question about that. In uh, in one regard, in what regard do you think that um, that the designer doesn't have an equal responsibility to do that? Uh, it's the same responsibility, but I think it's it's there's more solitude in illustration because for me at least, it's kind of about me and the writer. It's when I get to commune with, you know, Malcolm Gladwell for the New Yorker, since since you took the Bjork piece and the and the Murakami, you know. <laughs> Again, automobile safety regulation. Thank you very much. Um, so so that, that's what I mean. There's just a kind of a, a business attitude. Then you come up at, on the other end of having made the thing, and then you're 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 back above water, and all the voices are back because now you've got to fit the thing into the layout, and the the photo's too dark, and you've got to open the shadows, and you know you've got to get back on the planet. All right, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I guess that that's. No, that's a great answer. Um, I, uh, <laughs> Thank you. I, was, I, was, I was always drawn to doing both uh, insofar as there seemed to be an open call that if you wanted to do this kind of work, you had to, be, you had to have an open mind to be interested in anything. Like you, your responsibility, first and foremost, was to basically find whatever somebody was putting in front of you, and if you found it fundamentally boring, you had to find a way to bring life into it and, and find it interesting. Um, so I guess, per your original question, like what one, well, what a designer might learn from an illustrator or vice versa, um, you know, I think you, if you do it for long enough, or even if you're just starting out, there's, it's, it's very, very easy for that, I guess for that fundamental curiosity to kind of stem off into cynicism uh, in one respect or another. And I, I think whatever whatever membrane is required to secrete in order to keep that curiosity alive, um, and th that could very well mean turning off a ton of internal voices. Then I mean that's what that's what both halves of that of that partnership have to do whenever you're whenever you're figuring something out. Um, only because I guess in my experiences, particularly with editorial, and this might be a victim of my own approach, but I like my my process never really goes in a straight line when I'm sketching, uh, and it definitely doesn't go in a straight line when I'm showing stuff to, uh, to art directors, because if I'm, if I'm stylistically all over the map, there are, you know, like a lot of other questions come up and be like, well, why, you know, why are you doing it exactly like this? And it becomes, you know, depending on my client, this can be like a very protracted and ongoing experience where, it's, where in my mind, there's a part of me at my, at my most exhausted, I'm thinking to myself, well, these are three perfectly coherent ideas. Let's 
let's indulge which one you think is making the most sense and, and, and get there. Um, but yeah, it doesn't always go that way. Uh, and so part of my, yeah, I guess part of my mission for a lot of this stuff is to, st- is to stem off a lot of that aggravation that can come up and, and just stay curious and, and alive to the process. I think one of the things uh, designers, or one thing I use in illustration that works into my design is a lot of drawing. Um, when I do logos and logo types, even just, just, you know, a logo type where you start with a font and then you redraw the letters. Like, there's a lot of drawing that goes in the design, but it's kind of secret drawing that no one sees. Like, the, and I think that a lot of designers are like, oh, I don't draw. But I'm like, you do logo types. You must have to draw to do a logo type to fix the font and change the letters. You have to redraw the A, the G, the, you know. So I think um, drawing is under underappreciated in design. And it's really helpful. This is great. Um, I'm going to, uh, I think, do we want to, well, we could talk a little bit more. Um, so, um, I, I was really curious, and I, I was starting to get to this at the beginning, uh, about, about, like, a, a mentor or, or maybe an influence. Is there, I, you know, to, to, to kind of do both of these trades, you know, you know, we might be looking at illustrators and we might be looking at designers. Is there anyone that you saw kind of? coming up that you were like, oh, they're doing both of that, and that's what I want to do? Was it, were, did, did you ever have that moment? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I had, you know, to, to continue the story of this guy, Alfredo Alfer Rosgar, uh, he was an amazing, amazing human being. He not only... Uh, taught us, you know, the, what typography was, what color was, and, but he had a very profound explanation for everything. But he also did another thing that it was important that was, because it's not only about the technique and, and, and their styles and all those technical parts, it's about connecting to uh, the world and, 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 and introducing that kid or that student who is about to access to something that is unknown. So he did a great job to me to, to say, hey, you know what, there's this thing called design that you need to know about. So, it, and then he, he used to brought his dog to, to school. And, uh, and, and then it was, it, this was 1995. There was a lot of, you know, cr- there was, it was called a uh, special period in Cuba. There was, there was no food or anything. But that dog had always, every day, th- he had an ice cream. And, and I was looking at the ice, I was hungry. And I was like, man, this, this dog, you know, it's giving his ice cream. And he said, you know, he told me once, hey, you know, Carlos, come here. You know what the name of this dog is? And he said, what's the name? He said, his name is Milton. You know why? <laughs> say, no, no idea. I said, well, let me explain. Milton Glaser. And then he started start talking about that. And he starts talking about how there are individuals that are able to create and be a voice in societies and change and influence and bring ideas that transform things. And, and then, you know, just introducing Milton Glaser right after, you know, by this great master, you know, that just blows your mind to the point that it doesn't really matter what you are as long as you can express your idea and visualize them and make people react to something. That is a privilege that we both as designers and illustrators have. So I think mentors are important to open that and explain it, you know? You know That's crazy, because Melon Glazer loves ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them, amazing. I was kidding before when I said no. Obviously, it was, uh, you know, my, my mentor was Milton. Uh, well, I, my first encounter was him in uh, junior, when I was a junior in high school, I was, you know, doing my English classes, and I got a book, and there was a drawing, very simple drawing of Julius Caesar, white, black line drawing on a white cover, just one little spot of blood, and there were three names on this book cover. William, William Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, and Milton Glaser. And I thought, oh my God, good company. <laughs> right? But it was that, that kind of um, storytelling. I didn't know if it was graphic design or illustration or what it was, but I, I knew that I wanted to be able to do that, to tell a concise story. There, I'm thinking about your question about what, what can a designer learn from illustration. And last night I was just cleaning up my slide library, and I have a bunch of slides or Im- images of things that I commissioned when I was at Esquire and at Rolling Stone. And I think that that as a designer, what I learned from the illustrators that I worked with is the power of gesture. 
because there's one little snap that you get as an illustrator to form a, a mental picture or a, an image or an emotion. And that is really incredibly powerful. And if we designers could be better at employing gesture in what we do, we would be better craftsmen. Tian, when, when you were coming out of SVA and, and started working at The New Yorker, I mean, you, you were coming from illustration. So what did you, what did you start to experience at, in that design role when you were doing that? Did you start to have a reaction or notice things that you hadn't? thought of before? In terms of the difference between... Yeah, the difference between the roles. Um, yeah, I mean, they were very different. Uh, my design work in the beginning was very rudimentary. I wasn't really a designer to start out with um, and learned a lot on the job um, as it was needed. And But I think that having that illustration mindset and thinking of things in that, in that process and, and what is necessary to create that kind of image really helped when I started, you know, assigning illustrations to other people. It's like we were on the same page, we kind of spoke the same language. I knew what they were putting in and, and sort of, you know, there was that sort of gelling that happened um, because I had been on both sides of the fence. And, and so do you feel like you can, you can also help guide the illustrators to that way? Um, yeah, I think there's, you know, it really feels like there's this common ground um, and... I know I sort of suffer along with them. It's like, I know, I'm really sorry, we have to do this extra change, <laughs> you know. I've got editors, you know, and, and things like that. And there's just this understanding, um, I think, because, because I've been on both sides of it, um, that we're, we're on the same team, it always feels like, which is great. Uh, we want to talk about mentors. Sorry, going back to that. Um, Sorry, this is going to be embarrassing. Um, <laughs> in the 90s, uh, I was listening to uh, some rock bands, and I saw <laughs> Melinda's art on some of it, and I looked at it, and I was like, that is awesome, and I think I can do it. And then I got through college, and later after college, I would see somebody like Stephen's work, and I would think to myself, I can't do this. This is terrifying. Um, so I... Just wanted to share that, uh, but, <laughs> but um, in addition to which, it's uh, you know you you mentioned people like Paula Shear and, and Paul Rand and Milton Glaser and these and these uh, tremendous people who can do all these things and, and like those those names endure for a reason because then it's it's practices like that that led me to meet people like Paul Sayer and Christoph Neiman and. and People that, and and Nicholas Blackman for that regard in that regard where you don't have to choose one path you can do lots of different things um, if you have the energy and the stamina and the interest uh, and I think a lot of that a lot of that mentorship comes with with recognizing that that kind of spirit and that kind of interest in another human being and for my mentorship. I think, well, going back to the 90s as well, the bands were really popular, I guess. I think it was good for us, when we were, that's, that's for, us for us in school, um, was Dave McKean, for me it was Dave McKean, because I, I grew up, well, I started drawing because my uncle gave me a stack of comic books, and I go, oh, this is cool, so, I, this is that, my, comics was my route into illustration, and he's just a, my probably my all-time favorite artist, he was, he's a designer, an illustrator, in different, various styles, um, movie director, musician, writer. He writes, and um, one time I did meet him one time at a Comic-Con, and he go, what's one of the skills that you should know is to write? And I go, really? <laughs> I can't do that. I, I, I just draw pictures, you know. And another person, also in the 90s, was like, I was an illust illustration major, and I wanted to be published, so I, I got involved with the school paper. And during that period, my design teacher goes, pick up this issue, this magazine called Ray Gun, and that just f fucking changed my life. It was it, issue 11, and I, then I got so sucked into David Carson's work, and like, but this is the possibilities of design, and, and I, then I became obsessed with typography, and so that love to make visuals, whether it's words, letters, or drawing robots, or cats, it's all... It's all the same language, or 
a different nomenclature. Like, like I like what you said about the like the species and the subspecies. It's all one big animal kingdom, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Jumping from lizards to uh, lizards. birds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, do we? Yeah, do we want to ask some questions? I, I think uh, this would be a good time to take some questions from the crowd. If, uh, if, they, if anyone wants to ask, I see a hand way back there. So I'll, I'll repeat those. Just uh, the first question was, you know, if you get if you hire yourself or if you get hired in house, do you get paid for that work? No. Uh, <laughs> and, and then and then the second question uh, was, um, do you hire if you do you not hire an illustrator because they have a design background? And for that question, I would say no because I I know he or she is a really great illustrator, and that's what I'm looking for. And back to your first question about. Um, doing stuff in-house, that's the one drawback by being an illustrator too, is when your, uh, to say your, your web department has zero budget and then you're on staff and they want you to do the illustrations. So that's always, it's kind of, you, you feel kind of bad, but at the same time you go, oh, I'm drawing pictures. So that's still always. Um, you don't have to say that you don't have Yeah. Um, yeah, that's sometimes why you end up doing it in-house is because maybe there is no budget for it. And I don't really, it doesn't really bother me because I, I feel grateful that I'm able to have this job. I wouldn't have that illustration job if I w didn't also have that, you know, nine to five job there. So um, it doesn't really bother me too much. And, and I'll answer your other question too. Yeah, it definitely doesn't affect if somebody is a, is a designer and illustrator. Um, I don't think it'll interfere with anything if I'm you know, hiring them for one or the other, then that's understood, you know. Well, you know, to your question, you know, for, for a while, I was a designer at a boutique design firm doing a bunch of retail, doing, doing a bunch of girly stuff, you know, shoe stores in New York and uh, malls and in Madrid and being part of that. It was amazing because I was a designer that and my, my, my peers were architects and interior designers, and, and I was a storyteller, I was the, the guy with the logo, and, and my, my work all, was always like very like fluid, right? And then I put all that on my website, hoping that people will, I mean, I will get freelance assignments, um, and, and eventually, you know, and I, and I also, you know, I was inclined to, to, to illustrate more, and I always had the dream of having illustrate children books, like we all here, so it's like it's a common, it's a fantasy sort of, um, and I realized that I was not getting what I wanted, so I shut down that website. I shut it down because I applied. You know, they all told me to find uh, an agent, and I went to Marlena Agency, and uh, and she rejected me, and I felt terrible, and I thought, oh, this is why, because my website is showing design and illustration work. I'm going to do a website, it's going to be all white, and it's going to be all illustration, <laughs> and fuck design. <laughs> and, and then suddenly, and in the work, you could tell that there were design capabilities because of composition, because of type, because this is the problem that you guys illustrators have, you don't know type. That's, sorry, I have to say it. So that's the, that's the advantage that we have. I'm sorry, I'm, you know, it's, you know, it's extreme, but I'm just trying to paint a picture. <laughs> So, mostly, you know, uh, I'm sorry for that. But, but the point is, you know, that sometimes you need to present yourself, you know, know who you are, know where you want to go, and, and, and let the work do the work. So if, that's, if you ask yourself an honest question, say, you know, for the next 20 years, do, do I see myself dealing with these bud big budgets and big people and big voices, whatever, or do I really want to be a quiet and focus on my art and knowing myself more? Because it's also it's a, it's a self-journey type of thing. Uh, then, for, you know, put your website more illustration-like if that's what you want. But you need to answer that question first because otherwise 
the industry will take you whatever the, the industry wants, not where you want to go. I'm sorry, I would just like to say that monetarily speaking, I'm the luckiest person of the in-house people on the, on the panel. Um, I, uh, I don't get paid for anything that I do for the book review, uh, but because the Times is kind of like a broad hive, uh, if a different section asks me to do something, uh, then I will get paid for that. Um, and I love hiring graphic designers to do illustration uh, because it's unpredictable um, and it's crazy. And uh, yeah, I think I, I think I'd always end up discovering something about another human being when I when I do, and probably if I'm lucky, a little bit something about myself too. Yeah, so I, I, I just got to summarize, hopefully. I'll get this right. <laughs> no, no, no. It's good. I, I, I think, I think that the question is, you know, for, for designers, how much is about having the stability of money, of a, of a day job? Uh, and then on the illustration side, how much is, is it about having that, you know, even though, you know, they might not make that, that same kind of wage, how much is it about having the lifestyle and, and the real, the true creative experience? Uh, is that sort of the, that's the summary question. Well, yeah. well don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, there are very high end and very well paid illustrators. And, you know, it's not like illustrators are poorer than designers. That, no, there are, there are people who are making a killing, right? In both sides of the spectrum, right? Um, and also there are, there are also designers who kill for that too. Like, they are designers in the good sense of the word, and they feel fulfilled just by doing that. Now, I think your question is, you know, how much goes into the design if you have to make a living while you're building your career as an illustrator? That's a valid tactic because that's where you're, where you're at now. Probably 20 years from now, if you really persevere and you do the work, you, you do that, you know, your work does the work, remember that, you will eventually will get there, you know, but you just have to keep working. So try to make whatever you can and take control over your career. And I think again, for the third time I'll say, I love my day job. I like, I like the stability, I like the paycheck of the benefits. And I think uh, based on our, I think our, ethnic, our similar ethnicity, my parents weren't really supportive of in our career. And they've always said, you know, if you're going to push brushes, you're going to be doing it as a janitor. I'm like, oh, great, thank you, you know. So they, they weren't, they weren't, very, it's a clever little You're laughing at my trauma. <laughs> so, but the thing is, they weren't supportive of that. So then, I think as, as a person, I want that stability. And then you do your freelance work at nights and weekends, you know, like that. And that there's, a, there's a really horrible onion store that says that, you know. Follow your passion at night and on nights and weekends, and um, and then when you're saying about the about, about an illustrator's voice, everybody has one, and and they work on keep working on that. And when I get a story that needs an illustration, I go, oh, it's very emotional or involves gender inequality, and then I go, oh, I, I know, I know three people right away that would, would be perfect for it. Melinda. I think that's Melinda. Me. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me just, uh, just to, for, for the record, so it's, it's about uh, presentation on a website. Like, you know, you're working in branding, you have illustration, but you also have branding and design. How do you kind of make that work? Um, well, actually, I should start back in the beginning. When I first started my career, the thing about illustration was, which isn't what the dogma was, you have your style, it's the thing you do, people know you for that one style, you only do one style, fortunately that is not taught anymore. And, <laughs> excuse me, I approached illustration as a graphic designer, and style, as a graphic designer, taught style is a tool you use to help communicate your idea, you change your style. And so I had this site, well, it was before websites, I had portfolios. Um, so my first thing, hurdle to overcome was, how do you show different styles that are very different and um, 
when I've got a site, what I do is I would just separate them in tabs. Like, you know, you have one tab for each style. And then um, the graphic design got in there, too. So I just have a separate tab for graphic design. And people are like, doesn't that confuse art directors? I'm like, art directors are really smart. They're not easily confused. <laughs> <laughs> if they are, you probably don't want to work with them. So it kind of scares off. So I just, um, you know, I have a separate, I'm actually doing it now, a separate tab for graphic design, illustration, and I have my illustration broken down in the different styles. And I think if anything... Um, it calms our, like, our director's like, you're a professional. You do all this stuff, you can totally handle this job. Like, I feel like it, it, and if, you know, the other thing, the other way to go is you just have two separate websites, but I don't know, I think it's better to show that you're a well-rounded person, you're a real professional, and you can do all this. So, I, it's not been a problem for me. As someone who looks at a lot of illustrators' websites, I love the tabs. Um, I think it's, it's so much less confusing than if you have everything lumped together, it's, I know I have to sort of sort it out in my mind and say, what is this person really going to be good for? Um, and so to break it down for me, it's just that much less time that I have to spend, you know, deciding what, what to hire you for or, or if I can. Um, so, and having two different websites entirely is obviously an option, but um, I do think it's great to show, you know, the breadth of what you can do. And it's true that the, you know, having to have an illustration style now is not, as much of an emphasis, and I think that's great. Um, you can do, you can have ten hats, and people love it. So, um, yeah. I think maybe based on tonight's discussion, you might consider having tabs for the like for branding. It could be very expensive, and then illustration could be under very affordable. <laughs> Uh, we have time for just one more question. I think the woman behind was. Uh, How do you feel throughout the years? You've managed to feel like you're creating your own ideas for the market. Oh, so so the question is, <laughs> the question is, you know, if, if you're if you're essentially working twenty four seven to to make these two careers work, I do not. I lost my mind. <laughs> and I'm drained. <laughs> no, if. <laughs> Anything you want to do really, 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 really badly is going to be a colossal pain in the ass um, in, some, in some way or another. So I think when you're, at least speaking for myself, I was lucky enough to start getting certain kinds of assignments that I was interested in and dealing with subjects that I was interested in, then you find a way to make time. And it's, it operates on the exact same principle as somebody who I would consider to be less fortunate than myself, who simply has a job that they go to every day and then has a hobby. Um, you know, I mean, we're insanely lucky, if not on the financial end, then certainly on the more human fulfillment end to be able to do stuff that we're actively interested and engaged in, in, uh, in doing every day. So if you want to do more stuff and exercise a separate but related muscle in the evening, then you find a way, you come to terms with how you're fears and desires evolve over time. Um, I have a baby at home, so if my fears and desires are completely flip-flopping right now. I'm still sorting it out. I did that for five years in the beginning of my career. Did a design job, which was like 12 hours a day, and then went home and did illustration until like 4 in the morning, and I, I had to quit. And that's why I do, just, like, the way I worked it out was I, I do design on my own and illustration on my own, because I couldn't. You know, and now I have kids, so there's that's not happening. So I, I couldn't do it. I don't know how you, how you do it with a kid. She's great. <laughs> She's just a good baby. Well, I, I'm just going to chime. I, I, I'm going to chime in a little bit. I, I, I feel like you know one thing that happens, you know, when you when you're taking on multiple roles, uh, is just you know I think you get you have to streamline. You have you have to get down to the baseline, and and in in the best moment, uh, it kind of keeps you from the hemming and hawing and the, and the, you know, you're just like, oh, I have to do this. What is the solution now? And, and I, I, you know, I, I think when I, uh, I used to, uh, play music a lot. And so I would be out at nights playing and then I would, you know, have my design work during the day. And it was, you know, like you had to just, you just do it. And I think that there's, there's an economy that happens, uh, with, with taking on these things that helps, uh, in, in both careers.
I just want to add one little note to that, that after, uh, you know, a day in the design studio working with clients and hearing lots of voices, I find that if I go home and start working on uh, an illustration or a sculpture, I don't find myself creatively drained, but rather kind of fulfilled back up so that I can go in the next day and, and face the design studio. So it's a kind of a yin and yang. Um, it, it takes a lot of energy for sure, but I think that, that it, it feeds energy too which is why we're all in New York, except for the socialist over here. <laughs> well, well, sure, we might have a president that's socialist. So. <laughs> or a fascist. Or a fascist. <laughs> <laughs> Good well, Lord, this is a free country. <laughs> Well, I, I really want to thank you guys. This is wonderful. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better group of uh, two-hatted people to, to sit up here with. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, coming out tonight. Uh, yeah.